Welcome to part 3 of the advanced sword system. In the last video I've covered the blocking mechanic and in this video as I promised we'll create some abilities. So what you're gonna do is go into the toolbox, search V effects and get yourself a visual effects pack. I picked out these two and then set the C frame position both to zero so they were in the middle and then kind of add them up together so they're in the same position as I want them. Now we can delete this, we don't need that. And let's group them and I could even maybe add something, maybe like a ball that, that like goes like this and then I don't know, something like that. So let's add that to this model and obviously we need to get the position so it's in the same position. So this ball would go something like this after we click a certain key, resize it again and then take all of these uh, models, go to can collide and turn the collision off and turn the end horde on. So they will need to be end horde and we can rename this into, I don't know, ability, the effects and you can add it to replicated storage. And again, if you haven't watched any of the previous videos, you should probably start with the first video in the series because that's where we made um, this sword which has like a blocking ability, idle animation, hitting animations and stuff like that. So now you can uh, duplicate it and paste it inside of a rig that we've used before, open the animator and we'll create a new animation which will be our ability animation so I will quickly do that. Okay so I've got myself something like this, I don't know just like stabbing the sword into the ground. So that will be our ability animation. We'll change the name, ability anim, and we can set the priority, I don't know, 3, and then publish it. Copy the ID, then we can close the animator. Honestly, the, the sword can stay inside of the rig since we duplicated it. If we want to add some new future animations, add a new animation to our animations folder inside of a sword, and rename it ability, paste the ID of the animation inside. And now first of all, as with the block and idle and hit, we will need to add it here inside of a local script. So add that and we can also make a track. And we will again use uh, the user input service from the last video. So input began and then do colon connect and inside put a function, we'll put input and this time we do need um, game process event. So then if game process event then return end. But if input dot key code, so I will use key code for this. Uh, maybe you can use some mouse button but I'm not sure about that. So inum dot key code dot what could we use? Maybe E. Yeah, sure, we, E is like the most basic one, so we'll go with that. And if you want, you can uh, create a variable up here. Local um, ability one key code equals enum dot key code dot E. So this way you can just change it here. You don't need to go searching inside of the script. And now first thing uh, we need to do is actually wait. We forgot to add a check and is equipped, I think. Yeah equals true because obviously the sword needs to be equipped for the ability to work and we can also do can hit equals true just so the player can't spam it because can hit is I think from the first video so if the player is like spam clicking the left uh, mouse button they can't spam the ability too and we can also do local ability cooldown equals and then in the seconds maybe five seconds or something and i will just cut this and paste it somewhere up here so we have easier access to it so it can be five seconds actually i will put it to maybe three just for the testing and we will also need a new remote event and of course you could actually maybe do with just firing the same remote event and then changing this value inside so if it's like a blocking you put uh, blocking and then inside the service script you have only one function and then here you put like value and depending if the value says blocking or ability or hit then you do the certain function but i'm just going to do it this way so it doesn't get too complicated but if you're having like a larger game 
with a lot of weapons, like, I don't know, hundreds of weapons, then you maybe uh, should do it that way that I explained, with only one remote event. So then down here we can do fire server. Oh, and actually, we should probably uh, add another thing. Local, uh, we can do just can use equals true. So this will be for the ability, we do have can hit, but if we add this cooldown to the can hit, then the player won't be able to like uh, use the actual sword instead of the ability. So we'll uh, get can use, and <laughs> another and here, can uh, use equals true, and let's just make this a bit prettier, so like this. Okay, and then up here we will need a local function, we can do ability tween. So we'll actually create a GUI for this ability cooldown, and we can also fire it uh, down here, so ability tween. So if we can use equals true, then can use equals false, and we can then do uh, down here again can use equals true. But we need to create our GUI. So go to the starter GUI. We won't use the screen GUI actually. We will use the billboard GUI. And then actually just cut it because we should then design it in here. So let's do something like this. And set it to always on top. And this might not be like what you hoped we were doing. But I think this would look much better. And if you want you can just basically transfer the script uh, for this into the screen GUI as well and yeah we can leave the distance infinite but I'd like to make it something like this then put x maybe 3 or 4 and y can be 0.4 that looks good so now let's change also this and this can be our background so let's make it like that add another frame we can rename this into main frame and this into bar Okay, fill it all the way, and let's add like a stroke to this. Oh, and I just realized the stroke won't be visible because we have this, so let's do 0.7 comma 0.7, or actually no, comma 0, then comma 0.7 comma 0. Okay, it's kind of visible, but we do need to switch the anchor point, so 0.5, and down here also 0.5, and then let's... Move it to that same position. Okay, maybe 0.6 would be more visible. Okay, so we have something like this. And basically, when the bar is not filled up, it looks like that. Okay, dude, th th that actually looks kind of good. Not gonna lie, I like the color combination. So we will go with that. But now we just need to move it slightly. So what I'm thinking is if this is... Like, imagine this is our character. This is from the third person. And the ability GUI could be somewhere around here, so we'll try to do that. Now, I do need to get a show orientation. Okay, so we need to move this GUI uh, there because this is the front side. And I will also rename it ability cooldown. And I believe it's studs offset, so let's do like 3, okay, maybe uh, 5, 4, I think that's okay. And then we can do maybe 2. And actually, let's just insert it in here, makes more sense. So what I'm thinking is just insert it, maybe even in the humanoid root part. Okay, yeah. Oh, that, that doesn't look bad, not gonna lie. Yeah, I think humanoid root part, so it's, um, it works with R15 as well. And it also goes all the way around, so this actually looks really good. Okay, so now that we have that, uh, just cut it, paste it inside the starter GUI, can disable it. Okay, so go back up here. Uh, now we need our GUI, so local ability GUI equals player dot player GUI dot ability cooldown. Copy that. And we should probably enable it when tool is equipped. So let's do that. So down here dot enable equals true. Or actually, we should enable it after we adorn it. Ability GUI dot adorni equals do we have okay we have a character we have a humanoid root part uh, we don't so let's get that mm, root part equals um, character find for child humanoid root part 
and then we can just do it like that. And then down here to load unequipped, we'll first disable it this time, just so it doesn't uh, go on the floor and it's not like in the middle of a map and still visible. And then down here what we can do is, we have twin service, I don't think so, so let's get ourselves twin service. So twin service, okay down here we can create outside of this if statement, twin info equals twin info dot new and the, oh actually we do need... Actually, no, we don't. We have ability cooldown here, so we can just do it like that. Enum dot easing style dot linear comma enum dot easing direction dot in out. So then here, uh, what we can do is local tween equals, and actually we should probably do goal size. So local goal size equals that's x. Uh, then utim two dot. Let's do it uh, from scale, because we did set the scale, so the goal will be 0, 0,1, so that's the x value and this is the y value, and here we can do twin service create, the instance will be ability GUI dot mainframe dot bar, and let's just actually create a variable for that too, bar equals, and just cut this, Paste it here and I think I didn't okay yeah, that needs to be capitalized. So I'm bar comma twin uh, info. Is it this one? Yeah, that one. And then here we can just do size, I think, and then equal goal size that and then twin play twin dot completed colon wait this is really good that they added i love this function so you can just do dot completed and then colon wait and until the twin is completed nothing below it will fire oh and actually i just realized uh, we kind of got it twisted a bit because this should be like that and then yeah like that okay so my bad i'm, I'm just like uh, i kind of confused myself because this twin is for regenerating not for the wasting although we could make one for the wasting as well so let's call this uh, region twin paste that here and instead of this we can probably do local waste twin equals honestly i'm just going to copy this like that Goal size, local, goal size 2 or something. And let's just copy this here and this should be 0. Uh, so this remains as bar, but twin info, okay, twin info can be that. So let's do twin info 1 and copy all of this. Paste it here and this will be twin info 2 and you can put maybe 0.5. And this task.wait is after how many seconds the twin will start regenerating. Not completed. Wait. Okay. Okay, so like this, um, we need to put a uh, goal size 2 here. Okay, so now I'm spamming E. Nothing works. We don't even have the GUI. And now if I equip our sword and click E, it goes down and then refills back up. And if I try to click E midway of it filling it up, it doesn't work. So now that we've covered that twinning part, we should move on to the actual ability and the server script. So let's insert our ability uh, remote event like that. Let's copy that and we can just throw it by them here. So on servant connect function, we get the player. Let's just move uh, this whole thing down here j just so that we have our remote events uh, triggering down and other functions up here so we'll create a new function ability and what do we need here probably player and let's uh, get the character and after that okay so ability effects Press. Okay, we do have replicated storage, so not ability effects. Clone. And then, oh, I think I've forgotten to... Okay, so get that ability, cut it, paste it inside of the workspace. Because we do need to get ourselves a primary part. So we can set... Is that... Okay, that's just that one. That's okay, I think. So go to the model, select the primary part and do edit pivot. 
and move it all the way down to like the floor it will it should automatically like lock on it we can also rename this uh, ball part from before to ball paste it back inside the replicated storage so now ability v effects dot parent equals uh, workspace ability v effects dot um, actually we can do pivot to and then character humanoid uh, root part and then we'll probably need to actually like do some math because it probably won't be like directly on the floor but i guess that's okay oh and one more thing i obviously had to forgot something uh, did we get the ability animation okay we have it right here so when we do this we should then do can hit equals false i will track stop so we did can hit so they can't like spam the sword while in the animation and then ability track play and then here we can do uh can hit actually that should go last just in case we'll switch this out as well then this can be played and this can be stopped and also when we send this we should probably do player dot character uh, find for shell humanoid root part dot anchored because true just so they can't really like move around and stuff and they also need to actually fire the ability so the ability and then player i believe okay so first thing we need to do is get this remote event and fire it before the ability twin or you could like do task so for example uh, task.spawn I believe it is and then do a function and inside here you can do it like that or as well uh, like a coroutine but I think that's kind of unnecessary here except if you have some other things below this so we can do it like that and we also need to change the orientation of the ability v effects which now that I think about it we can try it this way so go to model get the pivot and maybe we can just do like this would that work let's see if that works okay so that actually did work which is kind of cool okay one more fix i uh i don't know why i did this it should be can hit equals true i also added an explosion sound to the ball uh here are its settings and this is the funnel function but we should also probably do ball dot explosion and then the play so up here we use task.spawn which i realized it's not even maybe that necessary we get its ball size and for it do all the twinning play the explosion after the twinning is completed we do more twinning for the transparency and if the ball is touched we get the humanoid that touched it and then send it back to this ball kill function and then they take 50 damage and maybe the ball explosion we can probably do tesla spawn for that just so it's like delayed a bit maybe i don't know 0.5 okay so i have my sword equipped we can like block the attacks we have this uh, ability stamina type of thing and when i click e that happens we should probably add another sound for the actual first animation so if you want you can do that but other than that, I think this uh, looks pretty good and we successfully made a whole sword ability. And unless you guys want me to add something more to this sword system, this will probably be the last video for this mini series. And if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe.